guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode from the Hermitcraft server. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I am having a fantastic day. Thank you all for the suggestions. So last episode, we got our beacon. Finally, we've been waiting essentially. Well, I shouldn't say we've been waiting, but we've been working towards a beacon for quite some time, little by little. And last episode, we finally got it after a whole lot of grinding for iron and wither skulls and all that kind of fun stuff. And today, I want to put that beacon to good use, and we are going to make a sheep farm. Now, last episode I asked, should I make it a community farm, or should I make it into, uh, you know, some sort of profitable business, right? Like a, a, a capitalist sort of thing. Uh, and the vast majority of you said, make those diamonds. Get that money. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. I've decided I was originally going to put the uh, the sheep farm over by my house, but I've decided we're actually going to put it here in the shopping district and it's going to run on a system fairly similar to iTrade. So basically what I'm thinking is we'll put our sheep farm. I've already kind of hollowed out the 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 like super basic boundaries of where it's going to go. You can see it going down that way. Um, but basically how it's going to work is hermits will pay. I'm thinking like one diamond to get in the door. And then once they're in the door, they can shear as much wool of whatever colors they want. So uh, essentially it's like trading one diamond for as much wool as you want, as long as you're willing to shear it yourself. And that way, I don't really have to do anything to the farm once it's up and running. Uh, I don't have to, you know, go and haul. I don't have to restock it or anything like that. I just need to get the sheep in there and breed them up and all that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll get with, like, Impulse and have him wire up some sort of a hopper system at the entrance. Um, I haven't really decided on that yet. I'm sure that uh, the other hermits, you know, we uh, the honor system is very much a thing on Hermitcraft. So, like, I'm sure even if I just had a regular door and I put a chest right at the entrance that said, remember to pay your diamond, you know, people would do it. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but I might have I might have one of the redstoners on the server, like, wire up uh, some sort of entrance, uh, you know, you pay your diamond to get in sort of thing. Who knows? Uh, but the first thing I need to do is dig out the area. Um, I have decided that I'm going to go with the smaller version of the farm. Last episode, I talked about making uh, basically the same farm that I made in Season 4, and actually that I've made in my single-player World Kingdoms as well, um, but making it bigger. I think with us building it in the shopping district... I really think that we shouldn't build it bigger uh, because I don't want to take up too much space. I mean, it's it's going to be pretty big. It's going to be uh, like, I think the smaller version of the farm is 31 by 49 or something like that. So it's still a pretty big farm. It's it's going to take up a lot of space. And I don't want to take up like the entire underground <laughs> underneath the shopping district for this farm because that's not fair to the other hermits. Uh, so I'm going to go with the smaller version of the farm. I still have to dig it out. I got to do a little bit of uh, kind of like super basic landscaping, filling in some uh, some of the rivers a little bit, making them not quite as deep so that water doesn't pour down into the farm and all that kind of stuff. So I got a lot of work to do. I have a feeling there's going to be quite a lot of time lapses in today's episode. So I'm hoping you're looking forward to that. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with some things. Let's jump into that first time lapse.
Alright guys, I am back, and the whole place is dug out looking, uh, it's looking okay. I mean, there's a, we need to patch some of these holes in the ceiling and all that kind of stuff. Shouldn't be super difficult to do. Um, but unfortunately, at the moment, my, uh, my tools are kind of in a pretty bad spot, you can see. And I still have more digging to do. I need to, uh probably lower this floor by like another couple of blocks at least because uh, I want the interior to probably be probably five or six maybe seven I mean yeah I, I don't know we'll see um but yeah my tools bad spot not very good uh however I have a solution for this problem so let's run up here uh first of all Tango over there has opened up a an elytra shop. They also sell rockets and a whole bunch of things. Uh, rockets, elytra, and most important... Oh, those are the, the name tags from Iskull's uh, Black Pearl shop. Most importantly, though, he's selling shulker boxes for cheaper than Python. So, we're going to buy a few. Uh, so let's go ahead and buy maybe four... There we go. I'll put in that many diamonds. That should be good. And then we'll put these back. So now I have four more shulker boxes. We're going to need those for all the resources that we've mined out. I have mined out just in those, uh, those like, basically four layers. Uh, I have mined out four full shulker boxes of resources. So, yeah. Uh, if I'm going to hold on to these resources... We're going to run out of space in our storage room real quick. So I either need more shulker boxes so I can put uh, so I can nest shulker boxes inside of double chests for like cobblestone and smooth stone and stuff. Or uh, we might also be able to take advantage of this. This is new. Jevin opened this up. The community block exchange. And I think that this is basically just like a junkyard. So, for example... If I have all of this cobblestone that I really don't need, I can dump it all in there and say, hey, someone who actually needs this cobblestone, take it. It's all yours. I'm full. I have more than I know what to do with. Right. So we can kind of open up some space by doing that as well. Just as an example, and I think after we're done digging this out, we'll probably donate a bit more to the Community Block Exchange. I think the idea is that anything that's in there is free game for whoever wants it. But there's another shop that I want to pop into as well, and that's down here. Biffa's Book Boutique. Not to be confused with my Bush's Boutique. I know it's a, a couple of boo boutiques, but still. Um, let's pop in here. This seems pretty cool. Welcome to Biffa's Book Boutique. Prices are all displayed in each chest. If you need something we don't have in stock, please place an order and we will be in touch. Order book, ender chest filled with your diamonds. <laughs> nice. So, this is what I want right here. Unbreaking. Ah, I see. <laughs> okay, Biffa, so these are all obtained through AFK Fishing. I'll bet you just about anything. What I do need, though, is I need an unbreaking book. Um, preferably one that doesn't really have anything else good on it. There we go. That'll work. I'll take that. Oh, speaking of which, I need my diamonds. So these are ten diamonds for an unbreaking book. And remember the villager trader in I trade that doesn't breaking is he wants like 47 emeralds or 42 emeralds or something absurd like that for all that stuff. Uh, I don't need any of the trident enchantments. We got fortune. This is all silk touch over here. I actually wouldn't mind putting silk touch on my axe, but what I'm really interested in Oh, this is, I, I see. So this is the backside of these. I'm, I'm also looking for a protection three book and a fire protection three book. So I, oh, there's one, one diamond each. Okay, there we go. So we'll take that. And then if I can find, ooh, actually give me that. I'd like to have smite on my axe. 
Sharpness. Uh, this was regular protection, right? Yeah. What I need is fire protection three. But we can take that as well. That would give me smite five on my axe. And I like putting smite on my axe because then you can one shot pigmen. Fire protection three. There we go. Okay, so that's all the books we need now to fully deck out all of our stuff. Uh, I don't think he has an anvil in there anywhere, unfortunately. But what I'm thinking... I suppose the closest anvil is probably all the way over at the Community Enchanting Center. Unless, I wonder if uh, Python has one in his house. I really only need to use it twice right this moment. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Let's just pop in and see. Python, do you have an anvil, my friend? Anyone? No? Aha! Look at that. That's what we need. Awesome. Okay. So, I'm going to grab my elytra. I'm going to grab this mending book. And we are going to put mending and unbreaking on our elytra and rename them to Wells Wings. And there we go. We now have our ability to fly. And honestly, while I'm at it, while I'm here, you know what? Let's just, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do a little something else here too. Let's uh, put protection three on this guy. So that's now decked out. And then this needed fire protection three as well. And I still have 10 levels left over. So, Will it let me combine those? Oh, look at that. Smite five. Beautiful. That'll go on our axe uh, in uh, at a later time. Let's just put it that way. So the reason that I'm doing all this is Skull and Cub opened up a, uh, well, I, I don't know if they opened it up per se, but they created a new guardian farm that's uh, built using 1.13 water mechanics. It's pretty cool. I, I haven't actually seen it in person. I don't know exactly where it is, uh, but it seems pretty nifty. I think it's out. Let's see. So if this is south. This is southwest. So it sh I know it's over kind of by Iskull's um, iceberg place thing so it should be like over here somewhere and that's probably the best experience farm on the server at the moment from my understanding at least and I do have mending on all of my gear I don't know if I actually mentioned that but uh, b b between episodes I did a bunch of villager trading and grinding and resource stuff and levels and blah 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 and I do have uh, mending on all of my gear. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it right here. So, essentially, and we got to figure out where do you just swim down? How, how do you get inside? Where's the, the entrance? Ah, I bet this is it right here. Yeah, here we go. So, you pop in over here. And it drops all of these. I actually don't want any of the resources, so I'll just dump them. I'll just dump all the resources I collect in here. I don't need them. I want to. I don't want to take their resources because I know Iskal has a shop for like prismarine lanterns and all that kind of stuff. And I want to make sure that he still is able to, you know, get his necessary money and stuff. But what I do need is the levels. <laughs> so I'm. I'm I might keep that mini guardian head as well. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna use this to repair all of my gear and all that kind of good stuff. I'll be back with you in just a little bit. All right, guys, I am back and I've gotten uh, the whole area dug out. Uh, did a little bit more digging afterwards uh, after I got my levels and everything. So now what I need to do is I need to gather up a whole bunch of grass. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to do it here at the Savannah biome because A, it's fairly flat and B, it's not part of the main island. So I won't really feel guilty about just wrecking the savanna biome and taking a lot of the grass so that's kind of my plan i'm just gonna kind of get in here we're gonna need um i don't know exactly how much grass but probably at least a shulker box or two full so yeah i'm gonna start digging Alrighty, guys i am back i've got all the grass i need i got uh, two full shulker boxes of it and I've kind of laid out the interior of the farm. So uh, we've got a larger central pen here. That's this row of cobblestone. 
And then we'll have a three while well, actually, you know what? I forgot to put these ones down, but uh, we'll have a, basically like a three wide walkway between right where we're walking right now. And then we'll have individual pens on the outside. And we need to fill all these with grass. Now, I'm not going to do all of this uh, <laughs> uh, together, but uh, I do want to do one because it's not as simple uh, as simply taking this grass and uh, replacing all of this with it. There's actually more to it than that because we wanna make sure that the grass can spread. So essentially what we have, right? This is our grass right here. And we're gonna kind of go around like this. I'm actually gonna put another grass block down there cause it can spread up to here, right? So underneath these, uh, these cobblestone markers, which are not ultimately going to be cobblestone at the end, but they will be for now. Underneath each of those, we're actually going to have an air block so the grass can spread up right there. Okay. And put that back. And then over here, down here, this is also going to be grass. Right down here. So I'm going to actually have to dig out a little bit more down here as well. But the idea is that we'll be able to put these blocks back, but the grass will still be able to spread from down here to up here. And that way the grass can spread fairly quickly uh, by making use of some of those kind of diagonal bits. And we will still be able to actually have a pretty steady supply of grass kind of coming in. So. Uh, essentially, around each of these little pens, we're going to have a layer of grass down here. And this one will kind of wrap around as well. Uh, mess this bit up just a little bit, but that's okay. And then grass under each of the pillars. So it's basically going to look like this. Uh, but I need to do that to the entire room. I've also kind of marked off the corners of the room because there's not actually going to be a pen that goes here. This is just going to be uh, a wall of some sort. But that way we can have this nice bit of grass that kind of goes and spreads to all the different parts and to the, the pastures. And uh, that way the sheep will be able to replenish their wool and eat fairly quickly. So that's kind of the idea. Obviously, this is going to take me some time. So, you know what? Let's time lapse it. I am back. All of the grass is in place, and that's the grindy part of this far of this uh, this farm, this structure. That's all finished. So now we need to. Well, obviously we got to get the sheep in here, but we actually need to design the room as well. And I'll be honest, it's actually a bit later in the day than I thought it was going to be. By the time that I finish this part of it, you always underestimate. Uh, how long it takes you to plan out and dig and count numbers and all that kind of stuff. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably finish this in the next episode as far as actually designing and building the room. Um, but I've got a couple ideas and I, I want to kind of get your guys' feedback. 
so you guys can kind of help me pick out uh, sort of a general idea of what we're going to be doing. So let's pop over into a different world and look at a couple of concepts. Welcome, my friends, to Kingdoms. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this is my single player world. It's vanilla, uh, but there is a custom texture pack that I use for this world, which is why you have like these light stone bricks. Somewhere in this world, I have built the sheep farm, but I'm going to be honest, I, I don't exactly remember where I put it. Is it here? In, uh, this is, uh, this is the town of Altum. This is my, this is the first thing that was ever built in this world, uh, a couple of years ago now. And I know I've got a couple of farms here, but I'm pretty sure that the sheep farm is not one of them. Yeah, chicken, sugarcane farm. It's definitely not here. So maybe, maybe it's in the farming village over this way? Is it over here? Let's see. This is all kind of Tudor style. This was built when the bone blocks were first introduced into the game. And there's there's another one over there. That's uh, the City of Light that's still unfinished, but will be someday. And for those of you who have been wondering, where is Kingdoms? Don't worry, it's not gone. It'll be back. Now, this is a sheep farm, but this is not the right sheep farm. This is a, this is a, different, uh, a different variation that I don't like nearly as much. So it's not here either. Maybe it's over here in my Roman-inspired kingdom. Man, I love the look of this place. This is my favorite uh, thing. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever built in Minecraft. I love this place so much. I think this might be where the sheep farm is. I'm not really sure. Hmm. Tell you what. Let's fly up on top of this AFK platform up here. There's a coliseum. And underneath the Coliseum is actually a mob farm. Uh, if you've seen Tango's video of the mob farm that he built uh, this season, that mob farm is essentially a quadruple version of this mob farm, which was designed by Nembon. And Nembon actually designed that mob, for, uh, that mob farm specifically for me for this world. So kind of a cool little bit of Hermitcraft trivia right there. Um, but I'm looking around, and I don't think the sheep farm is over here either. Hmm. Oh, here it is! Underneath my little starter village for the beginning of Season 2. Season 2 and Season 1 take place in the same world. They're just like 5,000 blocks apart. This is where it is. Okay, so this is kind of the idea... Uh, that this is one sort of idea, sort of very rustic, very medieval. Man, mob sounds, they're so loud. Uh, friendly creatures, be quieter, please. Much better. Um, so this is one kind of an idea. We can kind of keep the stone, we can put in some planks and wood and do a lot of that type of stuff, and this should work just fine. Uh, there's slabs down here. Uh, we could easily, uh, well, this could still be a grass block, but, um, we could do something with lanterns like this. That would work fine for lighting. So this is kind of one option. Another idea would be to do something very kind of like modern, very clean, use some prismarine lamps, use a bunch of concrete, something kind of along these lines. And then you'd have the different sheep, um, you know, each pen, you'd be able to jump in like this. So each pen would be labeled with the proper color of wool. And then the central pen would be essentially like this, but a lot larger. So that would be another idea. Um, alternatively, there's just some other stuff that maybe we can do. Um, we could look at maybe using nether brick. Like, that could be kind of cool, especially since nether brick does actually have fences. So you could use nether brick fences instead. That might actually be okay, and it also has slabs and stairs as well. But you don't want to, like, overdo it. Um, these blocks here, along, like, right up against these posts, these are going to have to be slabs of some sort, or I suppose the other option would be to do carpet. Uh, at, like, the whole middle walkway would end up being carpet. That would be another option. But I'd prefer to do something that has slabs and stairs. 
So nether brick might actually be pretty good if we can find a block that goes well with it. And I suppose re actually, ooh, that might be kind of good. What if we did something like this, right? And then the center going down here, that can be a full block. So you'd be looking at something sort of like this for your pathway, right? There we go. Like, that could be kind of cool. And then I suppose for the ceiling, you'd probably one, two, three, four. I mean, you need to be able to jump. <laughs> you got to be able to jump into the pens. So I suppose you could do something like this. The problem is, um, where's just give me a carpet of any kind. The problem is right here. If this is a full block. You can't get into the pen because the the carpet raises you up a little bit too high. So we either need slabs at this level so you can properly get into the pen, which could be OK. Like this is something like this could look kind of cool, right? Or we just need to raise the whole thing up a level like up to here, for example, uh, which would also work. That's kind of what we did in the first design over here that makes this a little bit more modern. We could do something like that. I also like the fact that it allows us to hang an end rod down from the ceiling to provide an extra light, because without this, this very center block here is a light level of seven. And it probably wouldn't be an issue, but I don't know. I, I kind of like just having like consistent lighting. I don't like it when there's like splotches of darkness and, and seven is, I, I believe, the cutoff for where mobs can spawn. So it would still be spawn proof, but like you'd end up with like these splotchy bits uh, for the lighting. So I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. We could do something like this, though. And then maybe up here. We could do a nether brick ceiling. Man, that's so much nether brick, though. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing at this point, just kind of throwing out ideas. There's a lot of different block combinations. We could go something very rustic. We could do something very clean and modern. Uh, we could do something very, like, abandoned and runey. You know, use a lot of, like, mossy cobble and mossy stone brick. Something like that could work. There's a lot of different options. However, what I don't have, I've got ideas, but what I don't have is any more time for this episode. So, guys, I think I'm going to call this one here. Let me know in uh, the comments what you think uh, as far as ideas go. If you have uh, if you want to, like, sketch something out yourself in creative mode or whatever and send it to me, uh, send it to me on Twitter. I love getting those types of tweets that give me ideas and stuff like that. It's really cool to see you guys get involved in uh, a series like this. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. But I'm going to call this one here. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.